everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a very special Cunard Line webinar. My name is Anna. I'm an industry relations manager here at CLIA, and I'm going to just quickly go through some housekeeping before introducing our presenter. This webinar will run about 45 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we'll get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, which is CLIA Global. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Jamie Paco. Jamie is Vice President of Sales for Cunard and brings with her 25 plus years in the cruise industry with her experience ranging from market planning, inside sales, direct marketing, and advertising. You may have heard someone say that they are a Cunarder, but Jamie is a true Cunarder. She loves the history of Cunard, the White Star service, and the fact that no other line brings luxury on a grand scale the way that Cunard does. Having sailed on all three Queens and several transatlantic crossings, her Cunard knowledge is extensive, and it is my pleasure to introduce her. So take it away, Jamie. Thanks so much, Anna, and hi, everybody, and thanks for joining me today for the Insider's Guide to Cunard. We have a lot of content to cover, and I'm excited to share some updates as well. And um, so I'm going to dive right in. So I wanted to first start with how we all got started. And bear with me one moment as we get the technology to move. So where it all began. It actually began in 1840 when Samuel Kennard delivered Royal Mail between North America and England and offered regular transatlantic passenger service. But many of you may not know that we also pioneered the world voyage and we have been sailing the world for almost 100 years and we'll be celebrating our 100 year anniversary in 2023. So the world voyage started with Laconia um, when she completed her first ever continuous circumnavigation of the globe by a passenger liner taking in 22 ports in 130 days. So just wanted to share a little background that we are one of the oldest cruise lines in the industry, but we have all the modern amenities and modern ships of today. Our legacy is 181 years, and we've been bringing people together through these times, through the good times and the bad. We are currently focused on resuming sailing, and our legacy shows that the strength of our brand and our commitment to our guests continues throughout this 181 years. So I want to dig in a little bit on why you want to choose Kinard for your guests and why we, um, what our brand is made of. So if you ask anyone to name a luxury cruise brand, it's likely that Kinard will be mentioned. But we wanted to find out what customers associate with the name in today's marketplace. So we interviewed thousands of guests and potential guests and found that the overarching statements were all about how Kinard makes guests um, feel in three places. So how they feel, feel special with our famous White Star service and our one crew member for every two guests. It's also our exclusive grill suites. Um, we make them be inspired by our legendary voyages in iconic cities, world-class insights programs, and special event voyages. And in, they enjoy the freedom, the freedom of more space. We have um, a very high passenger to space ratio. We create all our voyages, so there's plenty of time to visit ports um, that they desire to see, as well as enjoy the ships with sea days. And we offer flexibility. It can be a dressed up experience or a relaxed experience, depending on what your guests choose. We have three ships in our fleet. We have Queen Elizabeth, Queen Victoria, and Queen Mary II. And we have a fourth ship joining the fleet with more news soon. So um, I'm gonna take you through each of the ships to just give you a sense of what they're about. So Queen Elizabeth, was christened by her namesake, the Majesty the Queen, and joined the fleet in 2010. And she really has a, a beautiful interior design, including large game deck, a garden lounge, Royal Court Theater with theater boxes. And she has a Hollywood glamor um, that 
is expressed through the interior spaces with lush surroundings and um, art deco design. She was refit in November of 2018, um, and she is uh, going to be sailing many destinations, including Alaska in 2022. Then we have Queen Victoria, who is similar in size and layout to Queen Elizabeth, and she is the first ship that has had a female captain in our fleet who is Inger Klein Thornhog. Um, and she is also the first ship to offer private theater boxes at sea. So both Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth have a Royal Court Theater with private theater box experiences. Um, she includes uh, beautiful large spaces, including the Winter Garden, the Commodore Club, which has panoramic views overlooking Queen Victoria's bow, and um, a new and gin, gin and fizz menu um, in the Midship Lounge, which offers all kinds of champagnes, proseccos, as well as gins and spirits. And then, of course, we have Queen Mary II. She's stronger, sleeker, smoother, and swifter than any cruise ship, and she is purpose built for the transatlantic crossing. Um, she still is offering regular transatlantic service between Southampton and New York typically over 20 transatlantic crossings a year. And she also visits many other destinations around the world, including offering the world voyage. And now in 2022, more Caribbean voyages out of Fort Lauderdale in New York. I call this out because it's an opportunity for your clients to see Queen Mary II firsthand in other destinations if they've already experienced the crossing or wanna try something else. Some of her highlights, besides what I just mentioned, also include Illuminations, which is a full-scale planetarium um, that also becomes a 3D cinema. Um, also much fun, I actually should have included a picture here, are our kennels at sea. We are the only cruise line to offer kennels at sea on our transatlantic crossings, and we take dogs and cats, and they are absolutely pampered, whether they're going from New York to England or England to New York. We also offer libraries at sea. These are places to relax and they are beautifully designed. So on Queen Mary II, we have over 8,000 books in the library and it's also just a beautiful place to sit and relax. And the Queen's Room, the Queen's Room on Queen Mary II is the largest dance floor at sea. It is actually um, created as um, a sprung dance floor. So if you have dance groups or anyone who loves to ballroom dance, it is um, designed for them in mind. In the Queen's Room, it is also the home to our famous afternoon teas um, with white glove service and scones um, and uh, uh, finger sandwiches and everything you could desire. It's one of my favorite things to do, as well as home to our gala theme ball events in the evenings, such as our black and white ball, masquerade ball, and my favorite one, which is Roaring Twenties. Our theme balls, by the way, or themed events are available um, experiences that happen across the fleet. So that's not just the transatlantic on Queen Mary II. Um, any voyage with Cunard will have themed ball events on board. And we have our fourth ship coming soon, and um, more details will be announced uh, in the near future. But we're very excited to add this fourth ship. She will be 113,000 tons and carry 3,000 guests. She'll be the 249th ship um, within the Cunard fleet. So we're very proud to keep growing um, the fleet, getting to 250 soon. And um, she's the first new ship we've had in 12 years when Queen Elizabeth launched in 2010. So now I wanted to bring you um, into some of the profiles of who our guests are and what they look like. There's gonna be a lot of content on the following slides. So I'm gonna go through them rather quickly, um, but we're recording this session. And so you'll be able to go back to it um, should you wanna dig in. But um, but I want to just give you some highlights on what our guests look like. So our Cunarders, these are our past guests that sailed with us before, and they're very loyal. They range, they're, excuse me, their age is mid-60s, and they're most likely retired. They do range in age, but that is the average age. Um, they're well-traveled, um, loyal, and they like glamour. 
They're drawn to well-known, reliable brands with a reputation for high standards, and they love art and culture. However, their attitude towards travel is they want to learn new things, but they don't want to be overloaded with too many activities. They like to pick and choose how to spend their time. 24% um, of them book 12 months in advance, and their average length for a voyage is 11 nights. Then we have the cruisers who are wanting more. So past cruisers who have not yet sailed on Cunard. These guests' average age is in their mid-50s, with half of them still working. So just to clarify, by the way, this data is all North American data for US and Canada. So half of them are still working. They love culture. They appreciate brands which are known for quality and imply status. And they also are in pursuit of enrichment, such as classical music concerts and gallery exhibits. Their attitude towards travel, our vacations are about experiencing luxury that they don't have every day at home. They consider themselves well-traveled, but still want to visit new destinations. And their average cruise length is about nine nights with 17% of them booking 12 months in advance. And then we have people who haven't cruised yet. So first time cruise experiencers that choose Cunard. They're in their early 50s for average age, and the majority of them are still working. Um, and before I jump into this, I want to note we get a lot of multi generational families on board as well. So we get um, various age groups with opportunities to, um, to bring their families along. So here we've got our early 50s, the majority are working. They are sociable, they're curious, and they're environmentally conscious. They like quality brands with a slightly more contemporary attitude. And they also have a keen interest in enrichment in arts and culture, enjoy theater and exhibitions, but also seek a broad, to broaden their horizons or learn new skills. 32% um, of non-cruisers in North America have heard of Cunard and would consider the brand. So we have a great opportunity to continue to drive awareness of Cunard for those that are seeking uh, a more enriching, enlightened experience. And then we have those who want the very best. So I, I think many of you have heard of the Cunard Grill Suites, but just to take a moment, our Cunard Grill Suites truly offer the very best at sea in luxury accommodation and cruise experience. So we have the Queen's Grill and the Princess Grill Suites. So those guests are luxury, luxury consumers of all ages looking for exclusivity. So they're drawn to high-end, successful, accomplished brands, and they like to enjoy pursuing challenges in life. Their attitude towards travel are those who want the very best and are most passionate about travel. This is driven by a desire to be surrounded by ideas, cultures, and lifestyles. So I think what we see here across all our audiences is that they love enrichment, the arts, culture, um, and, and travel. Many of them are well-traveled. So if a customer mentions that they enjoy dressing up for nights out, recommend Kinard. We offer a fantastic sense of occasion on board and also the opportunity for milestones and celebrations to be really um, celebrated and reflected through the Kinard experience. If a customer expects the highest quality of service, recommend Kinard, please. We offer white star service, white glove service, and we are attentive but not obtrusive. So the beauty of sailing with us is we will take care of your clients' um, every need, but we'll do it in a way that is seamless and natural to the experience. If a customer says they're tired of standard cruise entertainment, Please recommend Cunard. All of our entertainers on board are classically trained. So they, um, from the musicians to the actors, um, everybody has been classically trained in what they do. And um, we offer our Cunard insights 
enrichment program as well. So we have people on board from celebrities to astronauts that share their stories and experiences of life. It's a um, real opportunity to um, take your guests to the next level if they are looking for richer entertainment. Um, we also have themed voyages um, known as our event voyages around things like literature, fashion, um, and space, et cetera. So there's an opportunity to really also hone in on things that um, are most interesting to them. If a customer tells you they don't like the feeling of being packed in on a crowded cruise ship, recommend Kinard, please. Guests often ask us if our ships are sailing full. This is because of the feeling of space on board thanks to grand venues and wide open deck spaces. This was enhanced also on Queen Victoria following her refit in 2017 when a new app sun deck was added. So we have very high guest to space ratios on board. And we often talk about luxury on a grand scale when we talk about Cunard because we have spaces that are two and three stories high on all of our ships, wide open decks, wide hallways, and spaces like our Queen's room where um, it's open and airy and there's large dance floors um, that can accommodate um, our guests as well as stages and spaces for orchestras and entertainment um, to entertain our guests. If a customer enjoys meeting people from different backgrounds and cultures, please recommend Kinard. On a Kinard voyage, your guests will notice a real mix of guests on board from all over the world. And these guests often come away talking about the interesting people they've met during their cruise. And I know I mentioned earlier our insights program and it, also our event voyages. And these things um, really create an opportunity to mingle with other people on board and talk about their experiences. Um, so it's, it's really great that we have this camaraderie um, unlike any other uh, any other place I've ever seen traveling on board where people from all different backgrounds, cultures um, come together, share their experiences, share their stories and, um, and create lifelong friendships. If a customer enjoys luxurious experiences such as afternoon tea at the Savoy or choosing to fly first class or stay at five-star hotels, please recommend Kinard. Our grill suites enable your customers to take everything they love about Kinard to the highest level and escape to their private address at sea. Grill suite guests can enjoy the most spacious suites, the finest dining, and access to a private lounge and terrace. They really are the epitome of luxury at sea. If your customers enjoy dancing, painting, reading, going to the theater, playing golf, or even a pub quiz and some karaoke in their spare time, please recommend Kinard. Kinard isn't all about ballroom dancing and fencing, although our guests really do enjoy these activities. But a Kinard cruise can be the opportunity for your guests to learn something new or take the time to develop an existing talent. So I wanted to jump into what destinations are best for your clients. Um, because often the question is, where does Kinard go besides sailing the transatlantic crossing? And the answer to that is we go all around the world. So any destination is an opportunity with Kinard. Asia, Mediterranean, Panama Canal, world cruises, Australia, Alaska, and of course the transatlantic crossing are all opportunities to have your guests experience the Kinard difference. Also Europe and Caribbean. So I mentioned earlier that 2023 marks our 100 year um, anniversary of pioneering the world cruise when Laconia completed her first Kinard world voyage. And we're celebrating this by offering two 2023 world voyages. Uh, the first one, on Queen Mary II, she'll visit fascinating shores and the globe's most iconic ports, extending the journey from east to west and returning um, and a return sailing to historic and inspiring destinations. And these are just some of the destinations she'll be stopping at that I wanted to share with you today. So Queen Mary II, east to west journey, 
Um, and then Queen Victoria is offering a circumnavigation to celebrate our centennial um, anniversary of world voyages. So Queen Victoria will visit 26 ports in 20 countries and um, will also offer sailings round trip New York or New York to Southampton. And here are some of the ports she will be visiting. So up next, just wanted to call out our two classic transatlantic crossings on board Queen Mary II. Again, just a reminder, we typically offer over 20 regularly scheduled crossings annually. So we have our eastbound transatlantic crossing, which the highlights of this are on the left, which embarks in New York and sails to Southampton, England. So um, sails out of New York, which is out of the Brooklyn Terminal, passing the spectacular Statue of Liberty, and then it's seven days and nights at sea. The beauty of this is you get to the UK and you won't have any jet lag. So besides all of the luxury and the beautiful experiences on board, you'll be ready or your clients will be ready for their European vacation or whatever they have planned in England. Then we have our westbound transatlantic crossing, which embarks in Southampton, England. So it's a great opportunity to go over to England and enjoy Europe, um, whether you stay in London for a few days or whether um, they enjoy Europe as a whole. This is a great way to um, also be able to shop with no luggage restrictions on the voyage home, especially for those that are on our Eastern seaboard. It's also a great way to unwind from a busy vacation and feel relaxed upon returning home. For those that um, don't live in New York, it's also a great opportunity to then land in New York and spend a few days there before heading back to wherever else they are coming from. So I wanted to just dive in a little more into some of the other destinations that we go to. Um, just a reminder that we go to all these places. So we go to Europe, and that's all of Europe, Mediterranean, Northern, um, the Baltics. There's so much opportunity and these voyages are really hot right now. We also sail the Caribbean. So typically we offer holiday Caribbean voyages um, on Queen Mary II. And in 2022, we are offering Fort Lauderdale round trip and New York round trip Caribbean voyages. We sail New England and Canada. And what's great is we visit the birthplace of our founder, Samuel Kennard, visiting Halifax, Canada. And we're excited that after 20, over 20 years, we have our second season in Alaska on board Queen Elizabeth. So Queen Elizabeth is offering 10 night Alaska voyages sailing round trip from Vancouver. And um, they all include a visit to Glacier Bay and Hubbard Glacier. So two glacier opportunities in one sailing. So next, I wanted to share eight common Cunard myth perceptions um, and, and break those myth perceptions um, so that you better understand uh, what Cunard is all about. So one of the myths is Cunard is good for once in a lifetime trips. And that is true. The transatlantic crossing is a bucket list item and it attracts a lot of newcomers. However, we often find that these guests can't wait to come back. So many of first timers come back to Cunard. We're also finding that a lot of first time um, Cunarders are sailing Europe now. The next um, myth, Cunard doesn't offer a wide variety of destinations. So just again, a reminder, we do. We are currently visiting Alaska, US and Canada, Caribbean, South America, Northern Europe, Canary Islands, Mediterranean, Africa and Indian Ocean, as well as Australia and New Zealand. And we'll be expanding our destinations when our new ship comes out in 2023. The next myth, I wouldn't fit in on a Cunard cruise or my client wouldn't fit in on a Cunard cruise. But guests often tell us 
they are pleasantly surprised about how relaxed they feel on board our ships. They often come away talking about how many interesting and like-minded people they've met. There is a deep sense of camaraderie on board. Um, it's, it really is unlike any other place and everyone fits in aboard Cunard. The next myth, Cunard operates a class system. So we do not operate a class system regardless whether guests are staying in a suite or in an inside ocean view or balcony stateroom. All guests are treated to luxury experiences, including receiving a bottle of bubbly for sail away, slippers, a robe, and a full suite of Penhelligan's toiletries. Our ships are designed for everyone to enjoy luxury on a grand scale. The next one, and a big one, you have to wear black tie and formal wear on board Cunard. I actually often hear this as a joke that, do I have to wear my tuxedo all day? And the answer is no. During the day, guests are free to dress as they please. And in the evening, they can wear relaxed or casual attire um, every evening in the below venues. So we've got our King's Court Lido Buffet, um, the casino, as well as the Golden Lion Pub. Those are actually two separate things. So the casino and the Golden Lion Pub. And then the Winter Garden, as well as our G32 um, Dance Club, and the Yacht Club, and the Corinthia Lounge. Um, so one, there is casual venues available all the time every evening. Um, even on the evenings that we have our gala ball events, which are um, a lot of fun to dress up for, and you can pick your range of dressing up. Um, but if you're just not in the mood, you can find alternatives to do. All right, the next one. Activities on board are very traditional and not for everyone. So I know we've talked a lot about enrichment, but it isn't all ballroom dancing and fencing. As I mentioned, people love to do that, but it, there's really so many opportunities um, for experiences on board. And some of them are traditional. They're traditional to the cruise experience. We've got things like um, bingo and um, pool activities and fun things to do. But um, we also have enriching activities like painting and going to the theater, tasting wine. And then we have really fun activities like the pub quizzes um, and karaoke. And for some, it's just simply to relax and unwind. But we have so many activities on board. Um, and if you wanted to look at some of those on uh, onesourcecruises.com, we have 101 things to do on the transatlantic crossing, which gives you can give you and your clients a sense of how much there is to do. Um, the days are, are as full or as relaxed as your clients choose them to be. All right, myth number seven, there isn't much space to relax and unwind on a cruise ship. And as I mentioned earlier, that is not true with Cunard. Um, people often ask if our ships are sailing full and that's when they are sailing full. Um, and uh, this is because Cunard has such a high guest per space ratio for ships of similar size. And I often mention um, when I'm when I'm talking um, out in the field uh, that our ships are ranging from about 2,000 guests to 2,600 guests currently, where most ships of the same size have 4,000 to 7,000 guests. So there really is a great sense of space um, on board our ships. The next myth. I would be bored at sea for seven days on the transatlantic crossing. And again, I know I mentioned the 101 things to do on a crossing, um, but guests and agents often tell us that they didn't manage to experience everything they want to do on board our transatlantic crossing on Queen Mary too. So um, a lot of times people will bring books or activities to do in their stateroom and they never get to them because there's so much fun stuff to do. So I just wanted to take a moment and show you um, some of the spaces. This might be, oops, a little small um, on your screen, but it just highlights using Queen Mary 2 as an example of some of the spaces on board and the various things I've mentioned to do. So whether you're in stateroom or on deck or you're in the Royal Court Theater, um, 
there's not only a host of venues for activities, but um, the, the schedule is very full of what they can choose. So I like to call out things like um, on deck, we have sail away parties and deck parties that uh, your guests would um, uh, expect to experience when on a cruise. But we also then have things like illuminations on Queen Mary 2, um, concerts and recitals. We have, again, our enrichment program that is very in-depth. Um, we have beautiful spaces like the Commodore Club, um, where we have a resident piano. We also have um, a cigar lounge, not mentioned on here, but a cigar lounge on board as well. Um, so there's just so much to do depending on your client's interests. So how can we help you be more successful? So I just wanted to go through a few of our programs here um, and how you can sell Cunard. One of the best things is to book within our group program. So top reasons to book your group with Cunard include advantageous pricing, the lower launch fares for group categories. There's no deposit required for up to 16 beds. Our tour conductors are as low as one for eight, and our amenity points add value and personalization. Also, if you're booking the grill suites, which is a fabulous opportunity to get a high ticket a commissionable um, uh, item, they also earn double value on select amenities. Most FIT bookings automatically combine with groups to earn tour conductors and amenities. And group amenities benefiting the guests are protected to the first stateroom, no minimum required. Um, you can qualify for group rates with just 10 beds block. So it's a real opportunity to get enhance um, the offering to your clients um, with very little risk to no risk for you. Then just wanted to call out, I mentioned one source earlier that all of our um, collateral information, updates, um, sales, and offers are on OneSource, cruises.com. So please visit OneSource Cruises to get the latest information on what's happening with Cunard. Um, there's also Polar Online on OneSource as well. So if you're using that um, with any of our sister lines, it is accessible here and makes booking even easier. I also want to call out one more thing on OneSource as well, and that is Cunard Academy. So if you visit OneSource Cruises, you can also sign up for Cunard Academy. And this is a fabulous opportunity to learn everything about Cunard. It's about 15 hours worth of training, and it's broken up in training modules that are about 15 to 20 minutes long. So it doesn't take a ton of time. And what's great is when you complete it, you then qualify for a free graduation cruise. So um, to qualify for that cruise, you take the 15 hours of training, and then you need to make one booking, um, one deposited booking, and you will qualify for a graduation cruise. Our graduation cruises come out about quarterly, and they range in um, a variety of destinations, including our transatlantic crossing. And then please follow me on Facebook. I include the latest updates on our sales and offers, as well as what's going on with Kinard and just fun tips and tricks. Um, so please follow me at Jamie Paco at Kinard NAM Sales. And I want to thank you so much for your partnership and for also being here today to learn more about Kinard. I really appreciate your time. And um, if you have uh, any questions, I know we're going to do a question and answer up next. Please feel free to ask them or reach out to me on my Facebook page, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jamie. And we do have some questions coming in, and I invite everybody to keep them coming. Our first one is from Miriam, who is wondering if all breeds are accepted in the kennels on board. If all, all breeds, almost all breeds are accepted in the kennels on board. There are a few that are not. Um, I would, that can change from time to time. So I would call our customer service team. But um, I would say most 
breeds are accepted and um, all sizes of uh, dogs are accepted as well and cats. Okay, got it. Our next question is from Elwyn, who is wondering if you still have dance hosts on any of your cruises. Yes, so um, our dance hosts will be back on board. So we have gentlemen dance hosts as well as lady dance hosts to dance with guests who um, are traveling alone or whose partners or those partners don't want to dance. So it's a great opportunity to um, get out there. Perfect. And our next question is from Pam, who is wondering if you can speak to groups on board and your group um, policies. To speak to groups on board. So I, I'm trying to think of how best to answer that. So we have our group program. And then if she has a large group that she wants to manage on board um, and uh, book venues and such, then we might want to talk about that more offline but we do uh, host large groups on board um, and we can also make um, accommodation for their needs depending on what they're doing so if you're looking at incentive groups um, or uh, themed groups uh, definitely reach out and I can help you with that okay perfect and our next question is from Eva I know that you said that there are some fantastic um, themed gala nights and Eva is wondering how guests will know how to prepare for those gala nights. Great question. So um, when they make their booking, it depends on how far out the booking is, but we usually have those gala themed um, nights scheduled about a year out from time of booking. So um, they can find out either through their advisor um, who can then get that information from our call center. It will also though be included in pre cruise documentation um, to outline what the themes are so you can prepare. Okay, got it. And it looks like this will be our last question from Paula, who is wondering if um, guests with mobility issues can find their way around on board. Absolutely, yes. We actually have um, rooms designed also for guests with mobility issues and they can, and the ships are designed also to um, accommodate uh, mobility vehicles and such. So it's just a matter of uh, communicating that at time of booking. Okay, perfect. And those are all of our questions. So thank you so much everybody for joining us and thank you, Jamie, for that wealth of information. Uh, thank you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Bye everyone. Bye.